My name is Michael Gwynn. I am from Jacksonville, Texas. During the pandemic, pandemic that's happening right now, I thought that it would be a great idea to get people who were stuck at home to send in submissions about how they feel about being home. And it's, um, it's an anthology that I put together from all the submissions. I received submissions from all over the world. I put together an anthology called Home, an antidote of creative expression. The thing that recurred was loneliness and isolation, um, some panic, some genuine concern, a lot of anger, uh, some poly political stuff and a lot of conspiracy theories, you know, about was it something that was manufactured? Where did it come from? Why me? A lot of the uh, hardcore sentiment, the real sentiments, the real transparency came from people from overseas. It was weird, but enlightening to hear, to hear how they see us over here and an eye opening, you know, uh, because there was no filter there. Uh, for how they see us, uh, how they see us as having uh, access to everything and how we whine and how we're lucky and how we're fortunate and how we should be more together. We have more resources to be together and we choose not to. And so it, it was a lot of that there. And then I have one from this poet. His name is um, Richard Dorn and he is from Ontario, Canada. And he wrote a poem called The Bird No Longer Singing. And here it is. It's just a bird, but I swear I heard in a pleading voice and strong that it hurt inside for a waist so wide that it canceled out its song. And it said with the pain was a ball and chain that was born in corners four and a wake up call to the relations all still alive, but little more. As I heard its plea, it occurred to me that we truly lost our grip and my tears were shed for the living dead and the loss of fellowship. Then the bird was gone to some place beyond and forsaken this I felt. Such an icy field, it was cold as steel for the cards we've all been dealt. And I thought that was uh, on the money. Uh, for me, hearing other people from all over the world deal with one issue, strangely enough, connected us all. One, and two, uh, where we might be in this, woe is me, what, why is this happening? Well, we're not alone in that. Um, people are uh, sharing their thoughts and feelings in a way that's transparent. And you kind of, you know, you, you kind of, uh, your, heart, your heart goes out to them. You realize that you still have a heart that can go out no matter what you're going through. The main thing I've heard is, is, is that people need to, to appreciate each other and, and, and each other's presence. And, uh, and, and, and that they will. And I don't think we have a choice, the way it's, way it's shaping up, so. First of all, condolences to George Floyd and Brianna and Aubrey and everyone else we've lost to police brutality. Um, the young people just not gonna take it anymore, as you see, they're just done, they're done. And not only are they done, that is something that has resonated all over the world, it's like, when you have the Mennonites standing out protesting, that tells you that people are kind of tired of this. We need to move this conversation forward, and that's what they're doing. And they're willing to do it by any means necessary, and they really mean that. And so I think that's going to spark uh, a, lot, a different kind of conversation. I, like Obama and everybody else, we just, they're looting, take it out of there. You don't need to do that. You don't need to be violent, just speak and do so in a way that's gonna move the conversation forward. So what I thought I'd do is I would offer yet another anthology opportunity in an, in a, in an anthology called Just Let Us Breathe. And I put it out there uh, almost overnight in the email, 40 submissions just the first night. And these are poems, not only, to be honest, all the poems, 45% of them were from other races other than African-Americans. And that's new for me. Just like you see on television and, and in the media, there are a lot of other races that are out there fighting with us, you know, and, 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 and taking risks. Like that 75-year-old man that got pushed down. These people are out there, you know, at all ages. They're, they're people are just tired. 
So I thought I'd try to find a way to have an online literary call to arms through asking them to just write down your feelings, thoughts, prayers, poems, sentiments, and send them to me. So I thought the book would be a good compliment uh, or a good backdrop to some of the people who may not be able to get out in, in March, get out and protest, um, do anything else, but they still have a voice. There's a center in Dallas, the Urban Arts Center, uh, run by Mr. Giles King, who is, uh, uh, who is going to allow us to use this space when they let us come back to use space to have like an open reading for those who have submitted. So we've already had people say they're going to fly in. They want to be a part of that. Again, just a peaceful, you know, creative, powerful gathering of souls that are going to share. Most of the poems they are sharing are about being angry, tired, you know, we're not going to take it anymore. But through that, uh, a lot of discussion uh, from the younger generation on how, you know, if they remain vigilant uh, and consistent, how if they have a plan and they don't express anger in a way that's going to push people away from the table, how they can, uh, they can finally make a difference uh, for the generation, make an impact on how policies are done and how uh, oversight is done and how accountability is done when it comes to policing and laws. But the main thing they talked about was voting, getting out that vote. I want people to know that even old people like me can learn how to listen. It may take a while, but listen to why young people need to be in front of this discussion, why they need to be a part of the discussion, and that our role is to support them. And if they ask, provide information from my experiences. That's, that's what I've learned.